Now we'll look at the Sabbath in the New Testament. Luke 4.16 uh, says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. This is talking about Jesus. His custom was to go to the synagogue on the Sabbath. Jesus kept the Sabbath. But what about after Jesus died and was resurrected? Acts 13, 42. This was written after Jesus had been resurrected and was no longer on the earth. Acts 13, 42 says, And when the Jews had gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. And the next Sabbath day came the whole city together to hear the word of God. We can see that even after Jesus had been resurrected, the whole city came to hear Paul preach on the Sabbath. Now, this included Gentiles as well. As it said in verse 42, it was Gentiles as well. They didn't necessarily keep the Sabbath as the Jews did. So Paul could have preached them on any day, but he chose to preach them on the Sabbath day. That's interesting to note. Acts 18.4 says, And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. So the Greeks as well. They also had a, a slightly different belief system to what the Jews had. But that's enough of me talking. People are going to say, oh, well, you're putting your own bias on it. Um, I'm just giving you quotes out of the Bible. And so I don't be accused of just putting my spin on it. I'm going to read some quotes from uh, other religious leaders and other denominations regarding what uh, their church says about the Sabbath. This handwriting of ordinances our Lord did blot out, take away, and nail to his cross, Colossians 2.14. But the moral law contained in the Ten Commandments and enforced by the prophets, he did not take away. Goes on to say, the moral law stands on an entirely different foundation from the ceremonial or ritual law. Every part of this law must remain in force upon all mankind and in all ages. John Wesley. I wonder exceedingly how it came to be imputed to me that I should reject the law of the Ten Commandments. Whosoever abrogates the law must of, necessi must of necessity abrogate sin also. That was Martin Luther speaking. We must not imagine that the coming of Christ has freed us from the authority of the law. For it is the eternal rule of a devout and holy life, and must therefore be as unchangeable as the justice of God, which it embraced, is constant and uniform. John Calvin. These are just a few of the, the forefathers of Protestantism. Uh, and, these, and if you're a Protestant, you recognise these names. Uh, but of course, I've got a lot more quotes than these. I'll just start reading and uh, I'll put the references up on the, um, on the screen again. The current notion that Christ is an, and his apostles authoritatively substituted the first day for the seventh day is absolutely without any authority in the New Testament. The Sabbath was binding in Eden and it has been in force ever since. This fourth commandment begins with the word remember, showing that the Sabbath already existed when God wrote the law on the tables of stone at Sinai. How can men claim that this one commandment has been done away with when they will admit that the other nine are still binding. The observance of the seventh day did not cease until it was abolished after the Roman Empire became Christian. The Sabbath is a part of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. This alone forever settles the question as to the per perpetual perpetuity of the institution. Until, therefore, it can be shown that the whole moral law has been repealed, the Sabbath will stand. The teaching of Christ confirms the perpetuity of the Sabbath. It is quite clear that however rigidly or devoutly we may spend Sunday, we are not keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath was founded on a specific divine, divine command we can plead no such command for the observance of Sunday. There is not a single sentence in the New Testament to suggest that we will incur any penalty 
by violating the supposed sanctity of Sunday. Is there any command in the New Testament to change the day of weekly rest from Saturday to Sunday? None. Not any ecclesiastical writer of the first three centuries attributed the origin of Sunday observance either to Christ or his apostles. It has reversed the fourth commandment by doing away with the Sabbath of God's word and instituting Sunday as a holiday. The first day of the week is commonly called the Sabbath. This is a mistake. The, Bible of the, the Sabbath of the Bible was the only day just preceding was the day just preceding the first day of the week. The first day of the week is never called the Sabbath anywhere in the entire scriptures. It is also an error to talk about the change of the Sabbath. There never was any change of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. There is not any place in the Bible any intimation of such a change. The Catholic Church for over 1,000 years, before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of a divine mission, changed a day from Saturday to Sunday. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorising the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we Catholics never sanctify. Nowhere in the Bible do we find that Christ or the Apostles ordered that the Sabbath be changed from Saturday to Sunday. We have the commandment of God given to Moses to keep holy the Sabbath day, that is, the seventh day of the week, Saturday. Today, most Christians keep Sunday because it has been revealed to us by the Church, Roman Church, outside the Bible. Uh, now, these are some questions from the uh, Catholic uh, Catechism. And uh, here's a question here. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church and the Council of Laodicea in AD 336 transferred the solemnity of Saturday to Sunday. Now, these next quotes I'm going to, to read, people might find a bit hard to take. Um, and indeed, this gives us an indication of where Sunday worship originated from. Now, this is hard for me to talk about. Uh, my mother was raised a Catholic and found the truth through reading the Bible alone and not being in any contact with uh, a Seventh-day Adventist at all. So let's see what um, these next few quotes say. The people became Christians and were ruled by an emperor whose name was Constantine. This emperor emperor made Sunday the Christian Sabbath because of the blessing of light and heat which came from the sun. So our Sunday is a Sunday, isn't it? Of course I quite well know that Sunday did come into use in the early Christian church history as a religious day. As we learn from the Christian fathers and other sources, but what a pity that it comes branded with the mark, interesting terminology mark there, of paganism and christened with the name of the sun god. When adopted and sanct sanctioned by the papal apostasy and bequeathed as a sacred le legacy to Protestantism. I know this is a hard thing for some of you to hear, but the Bible speaks the truth. And the truth is that Sunday as a day of worship, cannot be established out of the Bible. In fact, the truth is that Sunday, as a day of worship, has its roots steeped in paganism. I don't get any enjoyment out of telling you this, but this is the truth. So do some research and look it up for yourselves.